It is not so uncommon for songs to have specific meanings. Musicians tend to draw on inspiration that hit close to home, but at times the implications of the story run not just close to home, but hide under a veil of evil, and tell a tale far more grim than the average person might be aware of. Today, I will be telling the story of Don't Go, Bring Me the Horizon's Darkest Song. Not too far-fetched conceptually from any prior material, a lovesick tune about depression and the failure to uphold a relationship, Don't Go appears as the fifth song on Bring Me the Horizon's 2010 record, There's a Help, Leave Me I've Seen It, There's a Heaven, Let's Keep It a Secret. Hiding beneath the normal is something much more dark. This verse. Have you ever wondered why it is so blunt, so specific, and perhaps out of place a bit? It is because this story is very much a real occurrence. It was one of the worst injuries we had ever seen, said detectives, after witnessing the aftermath of a brutal murder carried out in South Yorkshire, England. The day is the 19th of July, 2004. A group of teenage friends are on a harmless camping trip. Terry Hurst, Rebecca Peters, Jermaine James, and John Sodden. The moments leading up to the horrific case to come is unknown, but an altercation had occurred between Rebecca Peters and her best friend, Terry Hurst. Terry was 17 at the time, a simple young man who had struggled with learning disabilities in his life. A major issue included was a speech impediment, difficulty in being up to the same speed as others, so much so that he was up to four to five years behind, and he had been diagnosed with autism early in his life. Terry believed he was going to be enjoying a healthy, beautiful trip to the reservoir, but his paradise quickly became his worst nightmare. He stayed behind in his tent, while the friends went to the nearby village of Bolsterstone. After going behind his back to steal agricultural scythes from a nearby church, Rebecca, with reasons unknown, found Terry in his tent and started the assault. She then began to pursue Terry to attack him, inflicting numerous wounds on him in the process. During this, the other two boys, both aged 17 at the time, joined in. Defenseless, with no means of protecting himself, confused and worried, Terry fled across numerous fields. In the middle of nowhere, with no hope of contacting anyone nearby, Terry ran for his life but he was not nearly fast enough. Stopping him numerous times with their attacks, Terry continued to flee until eventually being run down. From the beginning of the assault to the end, Terry had sustained an estimated 60 wounds to his body. To say that a scythe is a dangerous weapon is an understatement. With a knife, you can easily sustain injuries. The farming scythes used to carry out this assault, however, were large, heavy, extremely sharp, devastating. Terry's body succumbed to the wound slowly but surely, enabling weakness to settle in as opposed to the perfectly okay friends took time when it happened. After being run down, Rebecca delivered a killing blow upon Terry by burying the scythe into his skull. With an uncountable number of wounds littered across his body, he was discovered by detectives in a ditch with a plastic bag over his head. The friends had attempted to dispose of his body, but the execution was poor, sloppy, mismanaged, Vile. Rebecca was only 15 at the time of this crime, sentenced to a minimum 15 years served and jailed for life, but after time has passed, she has effectively been seen as possible for parole due to good behavior. James and John, respectively, were both doled life sentences and still remain jailed to this day. In my eyes, good behavior is not enough to release Rebecca. Your offense was chilling, the judge had said. You knew he would be defenseless, you found him in a tent, and set about him mercilessly. After the initial assault, Terry Hurst tried in vain to run. He couldn't escape. You all chased him and caught him and continued the attack. The court heard that the trio had also kicked the boy, stamped on him, put a plastic bag over his head, and the judge had said you intended to kill him. It was the cruelest of crimes and perhaps the most terrible because teenagers committed it. None of you showed any mercy whatsoever. To say that this was an evil act is an understatement. These three friends, if you can even refer to them as such, brutally murdered Terry, in an act that was cold and remorseless. It is rumored, but not conclusive, that Oliver Sykes is potentially related to someone involved in this, but the origin of Don't Go, one of the most piercing and gut-wrenching songs the band has ever written, has a history that is far more grim than the lyrics being sung behind a screen. <laughs> 